Have you ever been playing a video game and wondered, could you ever make your own game? Maybe you're playing a game and thought, if I were making this game, I'd have done this differently. Did you know that many popular games like Stardew Valley, Papers, Please, or Undertale were made entirely by one person? And games like Minecraft, Terraria, and Five Nights at Freddy's were started primarily by one person, adding more team members only later in development. Maybe the next indie mega hit could come from you. But then you think, I don't even know where to start. I don't know how to program. I'm no good at art. This video will get your journey started. I'm gonna show you five games that you can make, what you will learn by making each of these games, how the skills learned by making these games build on one another, and by the time you're done, you'll be able to make a game of your own design. You might be wondering, why learn how to make these games? Won't AI get to a point soon that it can just make the game for me? Uh, well, it's not that easy. Learning to make these five games is still super valuable in the years to come. First, AI is not going to magically make games of any reasonable complexity. AI is a tool that will help you to accomplish a task. And to make a truly original game, the developer needs to instruct the computer on what to do. As amazing as AI technologies have been, I believe in the coming years, AI will primarily augment not replace the capabilities of the human using the tools. So the more you know about game development, the more powerful these tools will be in your hands. For the five games that we look at, AI can help you make them, but you are gonna ultimately be the one that puts all the pieces together. Second, understanding the fundamentals of an art form never goes out of style. When you're learning to play a musical instrument, you start with the basics like scales and arpeggios. If you're learning to cook, well, practice up on those knife skills. To this day, I continue to use game programming fundamentals that I learned 30 years ago. And the third reason, making games is fun. In many ways, I think making a video game can be more fun than playing a video game. Enjoy the experience of learning a new creative endeavor, the same as any creative hobby like woodworking, sewing, or drawing. Making these five games will be targeted at those who want to do solo or small team dev. If your goal is to work on a large team, then treat this list more to satisfy your curiosity to learn the total process of making a game. The first game you should make is Pong. Pong is a classic game that is easy to make. The game involves a ball bouncing between two paddles, and the goal is to keep the ball in play. In making this game, you'll learn how to set up a new game project environment, handle input from a keyboard or game controller, and handle collisions between objects. You'll also learn how to use game logic to detect points and add sound effects. You'll also have an opportunity to display UI elements to keep score. Some fun bonus activities would be making an AI opponent to play Pong against, letting the player choose the color of their paddle, and customizing the play field with a visually interesting background. The second game you should make is Breakout. Breakout builds on the skills you've acquired while making Pong. In a breakout game, a ball bounces around the play area and destroys bricks it comes into contact with. The input to control the paddle is similar to Pong, but now you're adding concepts such as managing the physics of the ball depending on where the player is positioned. You also have a chance to practice your level design. Some bonus activities include designing multiple levels with different layouts or adding a music track. The third game to make is Flappy Bird. In this side-scrolling game, the bird flaps its wings to navigate its way between pipes. This side-scrolling game lets you apply the input and physics skills you developed making the previous games, while also adding procedural level generation and working with simple animations. Additionally, this project will give you some hands-on experience with difficulty tuning. Some bonus activities would include adding difficulty settings or rendering the game world in 3D. Fourth, make a classic platformer like Super Mario Bros. A platformer is a game where the player controls a character that jumps between platforms and collects items. You'll continue to hone skills you learned making previous games while also learning how to create a 2D side-scrolling environment, handle gravity and collision detection, add basic enemy AI, and you'll have the opportunity to really practice your level design skills. Bonus activities could include creating multiple levels, adding some combat against enemies, making detailed animations, using tile maps for the environment. Once you start getting to this stage, there are endless possibilities of where to go next. For your final project, create a top-down shooter with a player-controlled ship, various enemies, and collectible power-ups. This type of game will take all the skills you've learned so far and add more advanced game logic, character movement, and AI for different enemy types. 
You'll learn about managing multiple game scenes, as well as many opportunities to incorporate sound effects and visual effects for extra pizzazz. There is a rich space for developing many enemy types and even boss fights. With these five games in mind, what engine should you choose? This is where I need your help. I'm gonna start a video series where I make each of these five different games in different game engines. There's a lot of game engines available, so put a note in the comments below to tell me what game engines you'd like to see me make these games in. Once all five video tutorials are finished, I'll be able to say, click here to be able to see each of these five games being made in a different game engine. Until then, happy game making.